Welcome to Vet Talk, man. This is another episode today, man. I have a very, very, very special guest. And today I have Miss Shanita Williams. What's going on, Miss Shanita? Not much. How you doing, Vince? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. So today, man, um, I know we're doing a special episode, man. We have a lot of women veterans out there that um have a lot of health issues and different things going on, especially because um a lot of them might have, you know, issues that they had going on prior to the military and some people after the military, um, they have a lot of major issues going on and man, what better place to come than with run with woods, man. So <laughs> do still to run with woods today. So please need to tell them a little bit about you and what you do. Well, uh, my name is Shanita Williams, uh, and I own run with woods and that stands for a world of obstacles, determination and serenity. And uh, what what I do at Woods is, uh, you know, I like to look at it as, uh, you know, like the breakdown of the acronym, you know, the word, uh, the world, you know, a world uh-huh. where women can come and run and run a race that's going to be pleasing to, to, to God and also just to their own selves. You know, it's nothing like waking up and being <laughs> okay with self. And, yeah. um, you know, and then uh, the word of, you know of a good report through obedience of self-denial and throughout the program, it's a lot of self-denial that takes place, you know, but you got to do it to get to where you want to be, you know, and uh, the obstacles, uh, it's just by breaking those bad generational health. uh, I I like choices, you know, like it's not, it's a choice, you know, It's it's a generational health choice. You, you know, I know for me, I grew up where, you know, I grew up in the country. So, you know, <laughs> I, I still remember being a little girl, like coming in the, in the, in the house to play and get ready to run back outside, looking yeah. on the stove, seeing a piece of fat back up there, like, oh, mm, I'm about to grab, yes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just the uh, the determination part of it is, I mean, you know, you, you have to be, not only determined, but you, you, you know, you, you, we can't do it on our own. So we yeah. have to turn, turn to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to help Amen. us through that, you know, and, yes, um, and then, uh, through the serenity portion is the actual forgiving ourselves, forgiving others, forgiving our past and just finding that serenity in Christ, you know? Yeah. So, uh, At Woods, I've designed several programs to actually help women specifically deal with this stuff and break past that I can't, I don't, I won't, you know, and and stop looking for the 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 side of pity and and start looking to to self for that self denial and uh, to get to where you need to go, you know, and. I use running for a lot of different reasons, you know. Um, there's a there's a actual study on the the brain, the neural cells within the brain, that um, running actually helps recharge those cells. So when you know it stimulates new uh, stem cells in the brain or brain cells. Okay. So. Um, and running specifically, and that provides the mental clarity to counteract this depression that we're suffering from right now in America, the anxiety, you know, so many young ladies, I meet with them time after time. Sometimes I mean, actually just a few days ago, I was, uh, putting my bike on the back of my car and this young lady stopped me and she's like, now mind you, she don't know what I do and I don't know her. And she, uh, do you do you teach? Do you help women? And I was like, "Yes, ma'am." <laughs> Here's my website. Like, it was so random. So, man, look at the Lord, man. <laughs> I I said, well, here, here's my website. You know, I gave it to her, and she, I was just uh, talking to her. I'm like, "What is it? You know, some things you want to do?" And she was just telling me. She said, "I'm I'm uh, anxiety. I'm really dealing with anxiety." And I said, "Well." Just, you know, set up, you know, you just have to, you have to take the proper channels. I mean, 
I'm in the middle of getting ready to go do something. I, mean, I you know, I, so I wasn't able to really go through everything with her right there because okay. I do have uh, things that are uh, set up and in place for that. So okay, 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 okay. So the question I have on um, for you was um, what made you um just basically start what you're doing? I mean, was it the or was it something that you spent time with the Lord and He kind of just brought it to your attention or was it just something you were really, really doing for yourself? And I guess along that journey of doing it for yourself, you kind of ran into other people that needed your assistance in some way. Man, you know, um, I definitely have to give all the glory to God because, you know, um, it's something that I was, I was praying for, but I was praying for, not only for myself, but, uh, other, other women, you know, yeah. kind of just like I say, growing up in the country, exercising has been one of those things that came pretty natural to me. You know, it's not really an exercise if you're having fun. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, I was just praying and seeking the Lord and asking him, gotcha. like, Lord, why is it that, you know, I'm still, because I had started gaining weight myself, and I'm like, why am I gaining weight when I'm exercising? You know, I, I'm not just laying around, but I still feel like I'm gaining weight. I still feel, you know, depressed. I still feel down. And, you know, and I'm like, Lord, I'm just not, I'm not even in a place to help anyone else because, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, people were asking me about physical fitness and stuff, and I'm like, I can't even help them. Because, you know, like, well, actually, I was uh, I was asked to take over the fitness program at my last church uh, when, okay. when I lived in San Antonio. And, gotcha. uh, of course, before you take any leadership role in a church, I encourage any and everybody to go to the Lord first. You know, no matter who who say you were called, you want to make sure that he the one. So, yeah. um, he, you know, he basically told me, you know, I'm going to show you. But I'm go I'm not gonna show you with anybody else. I'm gonna get the plank out of your eye first. No. And man, it was like fast food was stripped away. Um, <laughs> it was like, hey, you you gonna go back to cooking your own food? This okay. is where we're gonna start. And then I started cooking my own food, and it's like, okay, now you need to start growing your own food if you want to know what's going in your body then put in your food what's going in your body amen you know what i mean so i mean I, don't get me wrong no i don't we i know i understand including myself we all can't afford a farm and all that stuff but you know there are different techniques so you you know we have different options and farmers markets and things of that nature where you can get to know the people that are taking care of the cattle, the people that are taking care of the food. So just getting more personal with, with that side of it and basically uh, taking the face. We've basically taken the face off of the animal. And anytime humans included, anytime you remove the humane aspect of it, you no longer uh, care about or even think or consider what's being done to it. You know, a yeah. hamburger is just a hamburger. It's no longer it's no longer a cow. You know, so um, just basically putting the face back on these on on our food, and it's like if you only eating baby miniature carrots, then you don't know that that was once in the dirt, and you actually need to, you know, you 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 had to put a seed in the ground for that yeah. to take place. You know, so um, just putting the face back on it, and then. Um, when he, the Lord started dealing with me with the, um, with the mental side of it. And I mean, you know, I went through, uh, years of, of counseling after the military and tried to seek all the help I could seek, but there was no help like the help of the Lord. Amen. And, uh, once he showed me that aspect of it, and just started dealing with the spiritual roots behind all this stuff. And that's where, where, where Woods goes. Woods goes into the root of it, you know. Yeah. We don't surface 
w- w- you know, it's basically the same concept, like I just explained with the food and the vegetables. It's the same concept of the spiritual roots. If you just call it anxiety, then you never get to, you, you know, you, you're taking the face off of the fact that the anxiety comes because X, Y, and Z, you know, yeah. uh, getting, getting to that. And that's not anything I can do. I can only lead you to the water, which is the living water. Yeah. And that's Jesus Christ, you know? Amen. And um, so that's that was definitely a uh, long process for me. You know, the Lord definitely wanted to make sure that, like I said, the plank was out of my eye before um, I could address anything concerning my, my sisters. So, um, oh man, that was <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, I, I and I and I'm, I'm I'm tracking and I get a lot of what you're saying because I know um with me doing what I'm doing, it's the same thing. Um, a lot of those roads that you had to cross, I think every veteran, rather male, female, um, we all deal with that, and a lot of it, um, I believe comes from a lot of the things you're saying. Because a lot of us, um, like I know for me, I, you know, we were escaping something, joining the military. And the only thing I think the military did was amplify who we really were before the military, because, you know, they, um, basically trained us to be soldiers. They gave us free room board, different things. But like, um, I believe a person, um, no matter how much money they have or, um, whatever it is they do in life, they still who they are regardless of what it is that they do. And when you haven't dealt with just your past or certain things that happen to you at some point, your mind can't handle that pressure and you end up losing it, snapping or going off on the deep end. And then now, you know, your physical health, your mental health, everything just starts to um, go through this thing I call depletion, man. Like you just start falling apart. And I see that a lot in the veteran community. A lot of people get out the military and when they didn't, and and because a lot of us went in not knowing who we were, we get out and the military was our lives basically for most people. Um, you get out, you don't know where else to go. So you start, you know, on unraveling and all the training and everything that you got in the military. Um, if you didn't have a strong foundation before going in, you come out to that same, you know, rocky, um, stony, hard, um, I would say messed up foundation that you had before you went into the military and then everything in your life just start falling apart all over again. And you go from having something to now you get out. People looking like, Hey man, I thought you was in the military. Yeah, I was, but look where you at now under this bridge or, you know, you on drugs or, you know, this lady, she goes in and she comes back out with, you know, multiple baby daddies and all these different kids. And this man, he got kids all over the world. And, just a lot of different things, man. And I believe that's because a lot of our foundations going in, some of us, you know, we were Christians and got in there and went way left. And then you got some people who didn't believe in God and they go through that, you know, whole thing that we went through in the military without God and get out and find themselves in the even worse predicament. So it just, I believe like what you're saying, all of us have to, you know, be rooted and grounded and go to the well that living water and just, allow him, you know what I'm saying, to help us get through and, you know, allow him to show us what it is that's truly, truly going on in our lives because without him, man, we can't make it and survive in this life at all. That's right. So that's pretty cool. (laughs) I'll tell you uh, something. Um, Well, you know, I have a different way of thinking. And it's, for one, with, uh, with Ron, the, when we were in the service, you know, mm-hmm. we all ran aimlessly without a purpose. Yeah. You know, we weren't taught how to run. We weren't taught how to properly pr- place our feet, how to properly breathe. Now, we were given uh, techniques such as calling cadence and, you know, left, right, left. But if you don't understand what they're doing, then you just following orders. Yeah. You know, so you're not really teaching me. You're just making sure that as long as I can follow these orders, then I'm going to stay step, right? Yeah. Well, what Woods does is we're a different run. Not only am I teaching you to run physically 
but I'm also teaching you or uh, guiding you with the proper steps on the spiritual race, you know? And that's that race that Paul tells us about, running with a purpose so that we all can obtain the prize. And we know what that is, you know? So that's exactly the idea of running with woods, not just running without a purpose, but running towards the mark of the high calling. So Amen. when when you were talking about the, you know, the 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 military side of it, I do remember, you know, I grew up in the church. Um I grew up in my mom was an usher, my parents, we spent a lot of time at church. Amen. You know, um but it is easy to, to get off track when you don't know. We were just staying in step. I was just staying in step with my parents. When I joined the military, I just fell in step. Nobody told me, hey, this is why you say left, right, left. This yeah. is why you call in cadence. This is yeah. why. No, you know, my parents didn't explain. This is why you go to church on Sunday. This is why you read your word. This is why you have to abide by the guidelines of this human manual, the Holy Bible. Amen. Nobody ever explained that to me. So because it was never explained, once the left, right, left stopped, I stopped mm-hmm. because I was just following orders. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So now it's like because the Lord has truly, and I feel that he's anointed me with the understanding of helping women not to just left, right, left, but to stay in step, keep in step, and understand why you're stepping. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's when I, when, when anytime I'm, I'm teaching, uh, I, I have a student that's running with me, I always fall back off of them. And I just look and I'm just, you know, and it, it's funny because at first uh, one of my students, just was thinking that I was just running behind her. She wasn't understanding why. And at the end of the run, I broke down everything she was doing, posture, uh, the way her feet land, why, you know, like yeah. she's like, oh, oh my gosh, I just, I didn't know why you were running back there beside me. Said, well, in order for me to better understand you, I have to study you. I can't just assume that I'm going to bring you out here and teach you how to do this. And that's the same thing with the Holy Bible. If we want to better understand <laughs> Jesus Christ, we got to study it. You can't yeah. just think you can sit beside the Bible, not open your oh, Bible. Yeah. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. it's, if you put both of those together, it's basically a wonderful way of, of helping not just develop your brain, because that's what running is doing, but redeveloping your brain to understand the truth and understand it, you know? So it's not just, you know, people always tell me, can I do something other than run? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. But we run here. So yeah. <laughs> no, just, yeah. No, but I mean, there is an understanding. There is a, a method to the madness. And, you know, I'm not just talking out the side of my neck. I have the credentials to back it, you know. So, uh, and and I, I, I just read. Like, that's what I love doing, you know. And I don't just read anything. I like to understand, so. Okay, so my question for you for the audience is, what branch of service did you serve in? I served in the Army. I served in the Army uh, nine years. Okay, okay. What was your job in the military? Uh, believe it or not, I went in as a truck driver. And, okay, 88 uh, Mike. <laughs> yes, 88 Mike. And then I switched over to uh, 36 Bravo, which is finance. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, when I was like, wait a minute, uh, they getting the same pay that I'm getting? <laughs> 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 Let me do something <laughs> So, so, um, how was your experience as a, um, as a, as a lady veteran, um, or not veteran, but as a lady military person? And the reason why I'm asking this question, not the, um, you know, bad mouth, the military, anything like that. But I know as a gentleman, um, I got this, I got to see it as a gentleman, but also 
Um, you know, of course, my wife was in the military, but I got to see the opposite side um, for women. And I'm going to be honest with you. I know my sister asked, she's like, hey, bro, um, I see that military thing going good with you. I'm going to join. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think I want you to do this because it was just a lot of things that I saw, man, Um, that it was just like, man, baby girl, I knew my sister had some things she needed to work on. And I didn't want to see her go in there and basically fall apart more than what was already going on in her life at that time anyway. Because to me, um, I, I'm not going to say the military is a bad thing for anyone. But if you don't truly, truly know who you are, have a strong foundation in the Lord, then I wouldn't advise, you know, people to just join. But then um, I would say specifically lady veterans because I mean, military women, because it's 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 a rough road, man. It's a rough road. Um, my experience for me, it was, it was good, but okay. there was a compromising that had to take place. It's, um, you know, especially in the, in, in 82nd, it ain't no, it, it's very far. It ain't a lot of women. And when women do show up, you are pretty much a target. You know, so yeah. you, you show up. Matter of fact, when your name hit the roster, you got a bullseye automatically. So when I say compromising, either you were laying down on your back or you were laying down accepting what was the the verbal foolishness that had to go on. Or, you know, so for me, it's like if you can't you know, beat them, join them. So I just became kind of one of the guys, you know, I would just listen to the, you know, whatever was said and, uh, you know, the, the bad mouthing other women and the, this, I mean, that, that was the, it, like I said, it was either, but I, I was young. I didn't, I really didn't know any better. I was just trying to, you know, that's just the truth. Um, so, um, it was like, my MOS was male dominant and I just did what I had to do to, you know, I, I've never been a promiscuous woman. So that was out of the question. So the only other thing was to do my job really well. So I could become one of like one of the guys, yeah. you know? So it's like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the, the acceptance of them because man, she can really drive them trucks. And did you see her do that load? Did you see how she got got through that tight spot? You know, so it was a overcompensating and pretty much uh, exhausting myself just doing stuff that I necessarily would not have wanted to do as a woman, such as, you know, lifting stuff and going to the gym and getting bulky with the guys and just, you know, so it was, it, it was one of those things. You either were going to, uh, fit in, like I said, as one of the guys to, so that you can still get where you need to get, get promoted, or you can take the slutty route and get promoted that way. Or, no. you know, like I know you can go and, uh, become a Eastern star or whatever other, uh, thing they had going on. And that'll get you to the top too. Or you could just do your job really well over the top, pretty much, you know, I got overworked a lot. Um, didn't really get, um, you know, recognized for it. A lot of times it was just, uh, go get Will, she'll do it, you know? So it was one of those things and I knew I was being used, but I had to do what I had to do, you know, Amen. to, uh, to, to be promoted and to be promoted with some dignity still. No. So, um, that was, uh, you know, that's the, that's, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm just giving you the, the uncut truth, you know. <laughs> no, and and see, and that and and that's and to me that's vet talk because again, I mean, like when me and my wife sit down and talk, you know, she asked me a lot of questions about certain things, and like I told her, for me, um, because I was able, I was fortunate enough to go to Korea for my first duty station. I was around a lot of sergeant majors, first sergeant generals, and all these people, and because I was around the higher higher ups. I was able to see the game of the army. Like I didn't know it was a game. I thought I'm going into the army. I'm a troop it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I get to travel, you know what I'm saying? Which is a lot of the things that I was able and fortunate enough to do. But with that kind of politics side, 
and the politics side involved a lot that women had to do that I seen as a male that at first, when I first got in there, you know, I'm gullible. I'm a country boy. So I'm looking at these nice sisters. I'm single. So I'm like, okay, I want to be with this girl. And then next thing you know, you go from that, you know, sister coming in there, you know, sort of kind of got a head on her shoulder a little bit, but she still struggles with her identity and certain things. And then she get in there and she get caught up in that snag that you were talking about. Whereas, like you saying, like I remember um, when people, when women would come to Korea, before they even um, were processed, we knew they were in Korea and we had word this through people who were higher up or different people who, you know, looked at the manifest and knew who was coming where they were like, hey, we got such and such coming. And then they had one male to go up there and they spot check the female, which is basically them looking to see how she look, who she is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then before she even get to base, everybody know who she is, where she came from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then by the time she get there, you got all these dudes because in um, most of the um, companies that I was in, because I was an um, mechanic at the time, by the time she arrived there, you got all these dudes just standing out looking at her, just like, just, just basically, like almost like, almost like a slave trade type stuff, man, to where they just looking to work her in some kind of way. And what she didn't know was dudes were already plotting and planning. Oh, she don't know where she's at because she's in a new country. So I'm going to take her around and show her the things. I'm going to try to get her to, you know, that famous, hey, let's go drink and watch a movie thing. Like just certain things that, you know, was happening behind the scene that most women coming into the military first time didn't know. And then you had a lot of lifers or people who've been in the military, they knew, but they were part of the system either on the side that you were on or they were that person on the opposite side that you would talk about that was promiscuous and they were willing to do whatever it take to, you know, just advance themselves in life. And I think that's why a lot of people need to come see you because <laughs> it's a lot of female veterans that they're trying to figure out why they have a lot of mental issues and mm -hmm. different things. And um, the Bible says um, sexual sin is sin against your own body. So yeah. I believe there's a mental health aspect to sleeping around that most people don't understand and know nothing about. And I know about it because when the Lord started dealing with me with certain things, I would always hear pastor talk about that. You just can't sleep around and don't think you're not going to have mental issues. And he kept saying it and saying it and saying it. And then one day he just clicked like, bro, that's something that's wrong with something with you. You know what I'm saying? You got some issues because bro, you were connecting yourself with people you shouldn't have been connected with. Then you think about the fact you connected with people in different countries. You don't know what God they serve. And the Bible talks about the two becoming one flesh laying down with a heart, like just all these different things, man. Like people hear that stuff. And they be like, oh, yeah, that, that don't apply to me. No, brother, sister, it applies to you. And it really, really speak volume if you allow God who's knocking at your heart to come in and sup with you. And he'll show you like, hey, this is why you got these issues. And I believe okay. that's what a lot of veterans um really need to like reach out to people uh, such as yourself, or especially on um, females, because, I mean, God got people out there that's, you know, that's in him that can see, man, because going to the VA, I'm not knocking it. but is a lot of things that they're not going to be able to diagnose properly and they're going to give you medication and other things to basically um in my book um pacify it and really not deal with the true borderline issue which is spiritual 98 to 99 percent of the time in my book yeah, I, I mean I would, I would definitely probably say a hundred percent of the time <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, we talking about uh, one one flesh bond. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you think about a bond, if you if you were to take two pieces of plastic and melt it together, that's now bonded together. It's not coming yeah. back apart. You would actually have to take and melt the entire thing and make something different. You can't. Destroy. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. we we talking about issues that only the creator of it. Amen. He, you know, the one who knows the number of hair on our heads, he has to go back in there and say, okay, no, that piece of plastic don't belong to you. Mm -hmm. That don't belong to you. This don't belong. Get off of them because mm -hmm. I need my original creation. You know, mm -hmm. and he tells us he makes us new creation, new mm -hmm. creatures. So, yeah, yeah I want to be made new. I don't want none of that, nothing from the old man. You know, like everything I was reading in the word last night. Uh, 
my sister and I, we were reading and we're uh when we're the the portion when uh when you know Jesus was crucified and the people were still walking by uh mocking him and all this stuff and uh you know we just like to kind of just just get a under like just give each other our understanding of the word and we were talking about how the people were still going by you know oh he couldn't save himself and this and that well that's the same thing they doing to us but they're talking to a dead man you're talking to dead flesh the, those people from our past that come to try and you know oh Oh, look at Vince. Look at Vince now. Well, you don't know, Brother Vincent. You talking about a little boy that was in the army? You talking about a dead man? That man, I, I crucified him with Christ. Yeah. You know? So it's like, that's what we have to do and understand that. When people are trying, they're talking at us and they're not talking to us. They're talking to a dead man that's been crucified already. You know? There's people that can, oh, I know Will. I served with her. Okay, you did serve with Will, but I'm Shanita Williams. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I'm a new creation in Christ. Yeah. So it's like spiritual issues. Absolutely, that's what you have to leave on that cross. Everything attached to that dead man. So when you were saying ninety eight percent, no, I'm going to have to say a hundred because <laughs> that has to die. Like, you know, you have to, but you got to, you have to seek Christ for it. He has to tell you, okay, no, this is the root. This is what's going on. You know, you've been struggling with this. Like you said, when you, you were talking about uh, that, uh, you know, the, the sexual sin and stuff. So no. we definitely just. And I know what you're saying, man. That's, that's from the Holy Spirit. Cause I know, um, I think it was Monday I was in the gym and the Lord just began to speak to me and he was asking me the question. Um basically it was about um Barnabas and Jesus. Um who 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 would we want to see crucified? Because you know, in most people cases, they would say I would I would have cru you know, most people back then would have crucified both. But, you know, I was um learning a lot about just how the Pharisees were so corrupt and crazy to where they had they had to have something against the people. That, you know, they brought to the cross with, I mean, were brought to the trial of Jesus. And, you know, they, he, they had to have something against him in order to get them to get to the place to where they were willing to sell out Jesus to protect their own interests. Because mm -hmm. why would you want to see somebody else die? You know, knowing that, you know what I'm saying? Basically, we all deserve death. And in that case, um, when you, when you fast forward and go to the moment when Jesus was on the cross, here it is. You got two people sitting beside him. And one looked at it as an opportunity to get saved and the, op and the other one looked at it as an opportunity to mock and, you know, talk down about what was going on. And it, it was just so crazy when Lord was taking me back. There's a lot more I have to it, but it's just when he was taking me back and showing me that I was like, man, Lord, what's out <laughs> what I have been on? Because when, you know, um, pastor was talking about condemnation, when you feel condemned, it's easy for you to condemn others, man. And it's easy for you to see what they got going on. Just like what you were saying when God would take you back and get the mold out your eye. It, it was a reason why he did that because he didn't want you to walk around with that mold of your eye hurting other people trying to help them. And that's what I think happens to a lot of veterans is they try to help other veterans. But because they got things in their way, such as drugs, alcohol, or, you know, lascivious life and different things, they want to help them. But then in the, in the long run, they end up hurting them. Because now you start unequally yoking yourself together, which is, you know, why I respect a lot of what you were saying. Like, okay, brother, me doing what on uh, run with was, I'm not going to deal with the men because that's not what God called me to. I know you're keeping it biblical, but at the same time, the spiritual side of it is you're not putting yourself in a situation where you yoke yourself together in a way to where God didn't call you to do that. And to me, that's why people need to come see Ron with Woods because again, it's all biblical. It's, it's sticking to the scriptures. It's not something you're doing out of feelings. It's not no new age philosophy. No, it's, it's all biblical. And that's why they need to come see Ron with Woods. <laughs> Man, brother, you know, <clears throat> something that I, I don't really talk about much, but um, I started uh, this company uh, some years ago, probably about seven, maybe going on eight years ago now. Uh, and it was, uh, it was called Faith Fitness. And 
I was doing it for a couple of months. And the Lord, I, I'm just praying. And I'm asking the Lord, why does this, you know, feel so, so hard? Like, I just don't want to do it. He's like, and that's when he set me down. Like, sit down something. I have to take you through a process. That was almost eight years ago. Wow. The Lord set me down. I've been doing exactly what I'm doing right now, Run With Woods, for the last eight years for free. I've been giving this to women for free. If you came up to me and wanted, uh, you know, well, actually, I felt that the Lord, it was just, you know, different stuff. Like, you know, this one needs this and that one needs that. Sometimes I would just take women on camping trips and uh, canoeing trips, two, three days, canoeing down rivers, um, camping, just uh, hiking, biking, whatever the Lord put on my heart to do and never ask for a single dime because for one, I wasn't led to. And for two, the Lord was perfecting me. You know what I mean? And that I'm not saying I'm perfect. That's no, that's that's foolish to think that a human being could be perfect. That's mm-hmm. not what I'm saying. I'm Amen. saying he was he was perfecting me to be able to stand in front of women and say, you have to do it this way. No. Yeah. And not that way. You yeah. have to trust God and not yourself. You got to let go of this person. You got to move. You got to do this. You know, so it's so that way I'm not saying do as I say. And not as as I as I do, because that that to me is why, um, you know, I I I love woods. Like if I, if I wasn't <laughs> if I wasn't you know the the founder, I would be a part of it. And I'm yeah. not just saying that, but it's because I know my heart for it, in my heart for people and. The the even the the mere fact that all this stuff that I've been doing for the past several years has not has been on my own dime, making sure that what God is asking me to do is being done, and just actually <clears throat> showing me what a leader is and how to be one as far as this aspect go. Now. What the the future holds, what my future husband desires, and all that stuff, that's gonna be up to him. There's nothing I can do about that if he say I don't want you doing that. But as of right now, as single Miss Shanita Williams, this is what I'm being led to do by by helping women, Christian women. Yeah. Not just say Christian, but actually be a believer in Christ. So that way you and you're not just saying, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a Chris." I, I don't even know why it says Chris, but you know, <laughs> I, I, like I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a yeah. believer and walker of Christ. Yeah. So those are the women that I, that I desire to to help and lead. People like me who grew up in the church, but all you seen was inconsistency, you know, yeah. sister such and such pregnant by the pastor's son and, and uh, uh, the choir director throwing more flames than hell. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, so it's like seeing those inconsistencies and then going to the world. You like, ain't no difference. Oh, I can yeah. be pure trash call myself a Christian and be okay. Well, the answer is no, absolutely not. You can't do that. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. So it's like, that's, that's where the heart of woods is helping you get to the truth. Now for the ones who want to cover their ears, like Zacchaeus say, you know, in, 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 in that book where those, he went to go prophesy to, to, to the, to the foolish people and they covering their ears. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Okay, so be it. One thing that you know, I, I don't know if 
it had the Lord created me, so it had. But I have this peace about not being concerned if you don't want my God. Oh yeah. No, you if you don't. So okay, you know when people tell I'm believing, it, okay, have a good day. Oh, you ain't gonna say nothing else. I don't care. I don't care that you want to go to hell. If that's your desire, okay. What do you want me to do? That's like you know, <laughs> I'm gonna smoke this crack. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. You know. Now, if you want help, will I stop and help you? Absolutely. But are you yeah. gonna burn me out? No. Yeah. You're not gonna burn me out, and you don't want it. Oh, yeah. And that's something else. But that's something else with with Woods as well. And I really feel that women ought to know this before you go to my website. If you come and you assume that I'm going to babysit you, you assume that I'm going to listen to, oh, my leg hurt, my knee hurt, my back hurt. You're talking to somebody that goes to a chiropractor once a week. <laughs> you're talking to somebody who has to to do a lot of things to to maintain my physical condition. So I'm not here to listen to what you can't do. Either you want the help or you don't. This is not a daycare. I don't babysit. And I definitely don't bite my tongue. Am I rude? Not by, not by a long shot. When I say I don't bite my tongue, I mean I'm not going to tolerate foolishness. Because we're all adults. We all have a choice. And that's what I want people to make, a choice to live a healthy lifestyle. You've made a choice to live an unhealthy lifestyle. Now make a choice to live a healthy lifestyle. That's spiritual fitness, physical fitness, and mental fitness. You got to have it. If not, you just, (laughs) I have to bite my thumb. But... (laughs) You know, nah, say what you got to say. <laughs> say it the way the law put it on your heart to say it, man. I mean, this is vet talk and this is believer talk because as believers, hey, man, we just gotta, we can't, we can't cut to the chase when people die and going to hell. I'm serious. Like, I, I'm, I'm learning from Pastor Man not to be politically correct, man. Like, there's no such thing as being politically correct as a believer. It's just either you're gonna give people the truth or just stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the truth is, if you deny them three things, then you're going to be fat, stupid, in hell. And that's the bottom line. Amen. So it's it's a choice that you have to make today. And you don't get one without the other. You know, oh, understand yeah. that you can't even retain when you're reading. And trust me, I have did it. I have did it to see the difference. Eat unhealthy and read a book. And try and tell somebody what just happened in that chapter. Read healthy. I mean, eat healthy. Read that same book and watch you miss some stuff. You missed it from the last time. What? What just happened? I just read this book last week. How did I miss this? So how do you think you're going to eat unhealthy, read the word, and and retain it? You know what I mean? No, you know what? But I'm going to give you a testimonial. And I glad I, I'm, I thank the Lord that you said that. Because, again, I know you don't help men. But like you had told me when me and you had the conversation, you was like, hey, brother, I, I, I give your wife the tools, everything. And if you decide to do it with her, that's how you do it. So I respect that. I'm going to do it that way. So what you're saying is actually true. Since I've been doing this with her, I'm going to be honest to you. This has been the clearest that my mind has been. And I found myself retaining things that I've been struggling, trying to figure out, Lord, why is it that I'm dealing with like this mental fog? Like it just felt like, man, my mind was just always cloudy with just things like everything I did throughout the day. I remember all of that stuff. But when it came to the word of God, the actual living word. I couldn't retain it. Always hard to retain it to the point to where when I'm trying to explain things to my family at my family, you know, meetings I have every day where I talk about the Lord and different things like that. It was hard to do that without having my phone in front of me to, you know, help me recite and, you know, um, re-say what I was thinking or 
what I was studying, it, it was just hard. It was actually mm-hmm. hard. It was hard. And a lot of that was because I was eating nothing but junk. I mean, when I say junk, man, junk. But since starting this, oh, my God, I've noticed <laughs> a difference, a big difference. And, man, I commend the Lord for the work that he's doing through you, man, because it's much needed for those sisters out there. And it'll help them, you know, take care of that man because at the end of the day, if she eating bad, he going to eat back. And my wife always said, well, baby, maybe we need to do your stuff. I said, nah, baby, if we get you right, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be right because you don't want to handle the food in the house. You don't want to do all of the little things that I don't do. And if you're not on your game, then I'm going to be off my game because my mind is not, you know, I don't process things like you do. You know, God built you to specifically do the things that you do. Like women, y'all are very detailed. You know, y'all are sit there. That's not to say they aren't men like that. But I know for me as a man, I struggle with that, wanting to sit down there and read. But for my wife, when she's really locked in and focused on something, she gets into it. And it's just like, man, thank you, Lord. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So amazing. Thank you, sis, for what you're doing for these ladies out here. I, I, I'm serious, man. It, it's a much needed. And again, we understand, you know, many people aren't going to buy, um, buy into the Lord like that and take the help that he's given them through you. But, you know, just stay encouraged and keep doing what you're doing unto the Lord. Cause at the end of the day, that's all that matters, man. It, it's about doing it under him, man. I mean, regardless of people like it or not. And the, I think the coolest part about, on um, what you're doing is you kind of went through the prodigal son moment, not prodigal son, on the young rich ruler moment where here it is, you know, um, you know, in his case, man, when he was wanting to follow Jesus, Jesus told him he had to give up everything. And you've been going through your giving up everything moment for eight years. And I believe the reason why you went through that, like any of us, is because everything we do has to be done through self-denial. It can't be about the likes. It can't be about, what, um, how many people we reach. It can't be about, they have to be about total self-denial so that the Lord, which is the one that does the work through us, can do his part because he don't want us involved in anything that he want to do. Because again, you know, we expendable to him. If he feel like we too much in the way, hey, all right, you know what, I'm going to move on to somebody else. Yeah. Move on to somebody who, you know, not looking for nothing because that's what I want, you know, and that's, that's what it takes to be a true believer anyway. You have to get to that place to where, you understand it's not about you, man. It's about him, the creator. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Got to die daily. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, but I can't. I have to give that glory to God, and that's not a cliche. I know we hear it, and sometimes I'd be like, ugh. <laughs> but it's the truth. You, I mean, <clears throat> I can't. I couldn't even understand how I understand half the stuff, you know, my, anytime my office manager, when I'm going over some of the stuff with her and she's like, you're going to have to break it down a little further. I'm like, but why? I, I like, she's like, well, everybody don't understand the way you understand. And I'm like, but I, I don't, I, it's so not mine until I just feel like it's common knowledge. Like it's because it's the Lord putting it in me. I don't yeah. understand how I know it. So I feel like if, if, well, if that's the case, then it must be like walking. Everybody can do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, I have to stop and even, you know, pray through that. Like, okay, Lord, you know, Oh, I, I don't even, understand how like just I don't don't even think I'm explaining that right like he puts so many so much wisdom into me until even sometimes when I'm saying it I'm like I wasn't even thinking that but okay that was great (laughs) you know like how did I understand that how did or if somebody asks me that like how did you get how did you come up with that I uh I thought everybody knew, like, I don't know, (laughs) but it's definitely the Holy Spirit. And, um, I have to give all glory to God (laughs) because woods would be nothing without him. I don't know. I don't, I I couldn't even, you know, I couldn't put this together on my own if I tried. 
No, but that's that that's that true sign of a true believer, man. Because I mean, if we if we have the spirit of truth in us, then guess what we gonna be filled with truth. That's true. Truth. Truth. In order to have truth, you have to have the spirit of truth. There is no way for you to walk around with truth with a lie in you, which means the world. You can't you can't do it. You have to have Christ. And I mean, just even as you talk and I can just sit there and just think about Jesus like him taking that same walk we taking and we are walking around with all this in us and we trying to talk to people and, and he, he used to say to the side, I'm like, man, how long I got to be with you, man? Like I'm sitting there telling you this stuff. I thought you seen this when you saw me walking away. I thought you seen it when I quiet the storm on the boat. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, when I, when I cast demons out of this person, when I heal, when I rose last, like I've shown you all this stuff and you still struggling to believe. And then even take it further, going back to what y'all were talking, what you were talking about earlier with the Bible study, man, here it is. Jesus did all that, performed all those miracles. And in his dying moment, nobody remembered anything he done. Nobody, nobody defended him. His own disciples, 12 of them, one of them a devil. They, they didn't even realize, like, they, they, they couldn't even stand up. Peter, at the fire. Hey, Peter, you used to be his, ah, oh, that ain't me. <laughs> So, man, that just this is just the walk that we on. Sometimes it's going to be lonely, but, man, he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And it's just something that, you know, we can't just, you know, cliche say, but it's something we have to believe in, truly, truly stand on. And I thank him for just, you know, putting us around the right atmosphere so that we can continuously grow as believers. But also, man, giving us that, you know, that brother and sisterhood that we have that, you know, helps us out because, I mean, I always say um, my life now is a parallel to what my life was in the military. If not, I mean, well, not if not, but it's better because not only do I have that brothers and sisters that I can reach out to as such as yourself, but then I also have the Lord, the, the true general of our lives, man. And I mean, man, I mean, just the difference he's making every day. I want more people to, you know, come to him so that they can experience the fullness of Christ, man. And not just have a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. I want them to have that true experience, man. Because, man, it's awesome. <laughs> you better preach, brother. I'm telling you, I'm over here like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. <clears throat> and then you said that parallel. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so I literally just had this conversation yesterday. Like, so. I mean, me, <laughs> my my friend, my my sister, we were talking yesterday, right? And I was like, sis, I said, I feel like, you know, like right now, you know, like those pictures where it'd be like um, the upside down, like the, the bad side, the dark side, but it's mm -hmm. like the same picture, just upside down. And yeah. then it's like a beautiful picture and it's turned over, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like I've lived that dark side mm -hmm. and now it's like the perfect side now, you know, it's yeah. like me, but on the perfect side yeah. and it's, it's the truth. Like I'm, I understand now, like before I would just see them pictures and be like, Oh, they must be talking about, you know, uh, bad and good. No, that's a real walk. Yeah. That's a real walk. Like, and you have to walk out of that darkness. That line, you don't have to stay uh, under that. Like, you can just walk across to the better side. There is yeah. a fan. And I yeah. feel like it. I'm like, I could not have, like I said, with this, with my church home, where I live, what I have. I mean, I told uh, Miss Sheila this morning, I was like, you know, I'm so grateful. To have a friend like you, like, yeah. you know, like just being in that dark side and seeing what betrayal and, you know, just foolishness look like to, to be able to say, man, I don't have one sister, but I got a hundred, two hundred, yeah. like three hundred. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't have one brother. I got what, five hundred, six hundred. I mean, you know, 
I know when I see you guys at church, I'm always like, oh my gosh, what's up? You know, I know y'all probably be like, here comes. Oh, you know, no. Like, man, me and you got, <laughs> me, I think me and you equivalent had like the same personality. I don't know if it's a South Carolina thing or what, but like everybody, <laughs> like you the dude stand at the door and greet everybody. I'm like, bro, y'all don't understand, man. Like I remember when it was a drought, man. Like I lived in the drought. Like the years right. before I got the ABC was a drought. Like people don't understand how it was. And, um, like for me hearing pastor preach in 11th grade and from the 11th grade, which I was probably like, what, um, probably like roughly like 17, 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there. And two, I came here, which I was about 35. So imagine walking around with all that information and yet the devil fighting you. And, you know, for me, I kind of walked away from the Lord for a while. Cause it, it was just a struggle, man. It, just, it was just this fight. And I couldn't understand like. Ever since the day I confessed in my mouth and believed my heart, man, it just seemed like it was just a fight and I couldn't understand it. And then when you start adding on the stuff that pastor was teaching, um, that even made it even worse because here it is. It felt like I was the only person in the world that when I listened to him, it was just like it would resonate with my spirit. And I'm, and I couldn't understand that because even when I was introduced to him, like I was in church with a bunch of other people, like my family. And I'm the right. only person in that family at that, t- at this time that walked away with the information. I'm like, God, this is you versus everybody. Like, yeah, some things is God. The other things I don't know, especially when, you know, he started dealing with, you know, women being pastors and different things like that. Like that kind of like, you know, threw off a lot of people like, hold up now. All right. That man was preaching the gospel, but this right here, that ain't the gospel. And for a little bit, I kind of almost thought so too. Until I went back and studied the show that I self approved. And when I started studying, like, okay, so where's this stuff coming from? Why are people doing this? And why are people doing that? Like, what what is going on? And I'm learning that, you know, it's two different gospels, but that goes along with what you were saying. But then also, um, I remember I was listening to um Pastor Ramirez and this girl was asking him something about the prophetic. And he was explaining to her that walking in the prophetic and witchcraft is so much a parallel to where if you're not led in God by the Holy Spirit, you can cross over into the other side without even knowing. And that's just almost like what you were saying with that light and darkness. It's a parallel sometimes so much to where if you're not filled with the truth and the light of the Holy Spirit, then you will find yourself thinking you're on the right road. And really, really truthfully and honestly, you're on a whole different path. That's right. <laughs> and that's good. So Man, they I need mean, to come around with woods. <laughs> yeah, come around with woods. <laughs> <laughs> so they can stay on that right path, man. That's that's what that's what I'm taking all that to and I'll close them out. They need to come see you. I'm I'm serious, man. So if you assist out there, man, if, you don't have to just be you don't have to be military. You don't have to be former military. But if you assist out there, man, and you need that assistance, man, let go of your pride, man. Quit biting your lips, fingernails, pulling out your hair overeating and doing all those things and please go see my sister Shanita. I promise you. I'm telling you from experience, a little bit that she's doing with my wife, it makes a world of a difference. Well, thank you, brother. And any last words, anything you want to say to close out? No, I mean, I just want to commend you. I really appreciate what you do and that talk, I, I appreciate it. I can see you going a long way with this, brother. You are an outstanding host. Say, man, you are too, sis, man. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for everything, man. Well, that talk out. And what I will make sure I do is get you this video this time. I'll make sure I get it to you. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you be blessed, sis. Love you. Bye, Sheila. Be good. All right. <laughs> bye, brother. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>